Hi guys, today is uh, Wednesday, June 17th. And what I'd like to cover in this brief video is I'd like to uh, walk through the uh, concepts embedded in chapter one. Most of the concepts, if not all of them. And I'm gonna take a representative problem either from quiz one or from exam one so that you can see how to work through the content. So the first thing I'll do is uh, share my screen with you guys. So I'm sharing a session in my uh, Chrome browser and I am about to go into the dashboard. And pick one of the two summer sessions that I am uh, working uh, with serving. Uh, one of your two sessions. So you're either in 2112 or in 4135. Both sessions have a My Lab and Mastering button that then creates access. And this access uh, allows you to enter Pearson. Uh, and in Pearson, I'm going to uh, take a problem and demonstrate the uh, process of completing it. To do so, I'm gonna to go to the student links under all assignments. I can do that, or I can click on the yellow button in the center of the screen that takes me to the homepage for Pearson. It takes a few seconds sometimes. And once I'm seeing this, I'm gonna open chapter one, and I'm gonna open chapter one quiz. So instead of the lab, which is something that I uh, reviewed in the previous video, I'm gonna open a quiz and I am in attempt one of two. So I have two complete attempts at this quiz. And in particular, I'm going to finish uh, this first attempt. When I open an attempt in uh, Pearson, and it's something that I've been working on, the uh, problem that I will observe will say that I have uh, completed some of the 14 multiple choice questions, in this case three. If you click on the pull down menu, you will get a test overview and you will see some gold rings that are with the questions that I've already covered. I'm gonna cover one of these three point questions because these questions have a lot of content in them, a lot of multiple answers within the question. So as you can see here, I have lots and lots and lots of parts. Okay. So the structure of uh, these questions is, there's a paragraph, and in this paragraph, we usually have our directions. So I'm gonna copy this onto a sticky note. The sticky note is not visible to you, so I'm gonna make it visible by sharing it. Okay, I'm putting it in a sticky note so that I can make the font bigger and that way I can uh, read it carefully. So notice what the directions always say, the directions always tell you what you're gonna be doing. So it's for the following description of data. The first thing we're gonna do is, we're gonna be identifying the W's. The W's are the five questions that help identify whether a group and information set you have can be defined as data or not. Remember, data is information plus purpose, plus structure, plus context. So data must be information that answers five questions. Why? who in rows, what in columns, and possibly where and when to give you a sense of time and space, a context. So that's what they mean by identify the Ws. The second thing we're gonna be doing in this question is name the variables. So when we name variables, we're answering the question of what. 
the third thing we're going to be doing is actually a subset to this question where we are specifying whether each variable is either categorical or quantitative. And furthermore, when it's a quantitative variable, we want to know if uh, what are the units of measurement or say that they were not given. And uh, last, we want to specify whether the data come from a design survey or an experiment. This has to do with how the data was gathered. So it's not one of the W's or one of the y, uh, five W's. And then lastly, whether the variables in the data, so this actually, this here should say whether the data are a time series or a cross section. And then report what concerns you about any of the um, typical components that a data should have. For example, uh, are any of the W's missing? Is the how data was gathered problematic with respect to uh, representativeness of the data? Is the how creating a bias in us viewing perhaps uh, the greater share of data? So all in all, those are the typical questions that uh, you will have to demonstrate knowledge of terminology with. So those are the kinds of questions you get asked in quiz one and in exam one about this chapter, about the chapter on data and variation, data and decisions. Um, and so uh, after the, the directions for the question are given, uh, you will then see, so let me go back to the question now, after the directions are given, you usually see a case study or context. Okay? So this is a, our case study context. So I'm gonna go back to our sticky note and I'm gonna type the context of the question, the specific context as opposed to the directions to follow. And so it says, uh, an online survey of students in a large statistics class at a graduate school in the Northeastern United States asked them to report their total personal income, investments, sorry, and savings bonds, total number of different bonds currently held, and total invested in mutual funds, and the name of each mutual fund they invested. The data were used in the aggregate for analyzing the student's finances. So as I read the context, I'm gonna start looking at the components that each sentence describes. So here, we have the why. The reason the data were gathered was so that they could be added together so that we could analyze student finances. So that's the reason why. The sentence says that involve what were the students asked in the, in the survey? What were the students asked to report? Well, that's, that's what a survey does. A survey is a tool, is a tool to gather data on individuals or cases. In this case, we're gathering data on students 
who are so the who are the students in a large statistics class at a graduate school so that's the where in the northeastern United States and they were in a large statistics class so this is also part of the context or part of the where um, an online survey is how. And ask them to report their, and this is the what. So what are the variables, which are the columns of information. So we have one variable, total personal investment and savings bonds, and it's an amount of money. So this is a quantitative, variable and the units are monetary units, dollars in this case. Then there's the total number of different bonds currently held. So this is a number, so it's quantitative and it's just a numeric variable. Like a frequency count of how many different kinds. Then total invested in mutual bond funds is again quantitative. Okay. So that's the third one. And the last variable is the name of each mutual fund and name in which they invested. So this is categorical. And it's uh, also something we call nominal because it's a bunch of names. There's no particular order to it. Okay, so we have a why, a how, a who, a where, a what, and a why. Are we missing anything? Or we're missing a when, but other than that, we have every bit of information that makes this constitute data. So now I can have, and I'm prepared to answer any of the five questions uh, or five major parts of questions uh, in the quiz. So I'm gonna go back to the quiz. So I go back to the quiz and it says, who was measured? It's students in a large statistics class at a graduate school in Northeastern United States. I will say students in a large statistics class because that describes who. Northeastern, grad school, that describes where. Who, what was measured? Well, the total number of different bonds held, the name of each mutual fund, the total personal investment and the total personal investment in both savings and mutual funds. So notice how these are little squares as opposed to little circles. That means that this question is multiple selection as opposed to multiple choice. When were the measurements taken? It didn't say. So it's not given. Where were the measurements taken? Uh, in the United States. Why? Because the information was collected for analyzing the students' finances. How were the measurements taken? An online survey. And then what are the categorical variables? The name of each bond mutual fund, sorry. And what are the quantitative variables? The total personal investment, the total personal investment in both funds and bonds, and the total number of different bonds. So notice how I picked four different squares between the two types of variables, which represent the four variables in this description. So even though net worth isn't variable, it's not a variable listed in the 
context of the question, so you should not select it. And then it says specify whether the data come from a survey or an experiment, whether the data are a cross section or a time series. And since we're talking about every row of data is a different student, it's a cross section of students. And I don't see anything that really concerns me. I don't know, there's no reason to be worried about the composition of the data by columns that are categorical or quantitative. The, the, the composition of variables is a function of your purpose in the data. If your purpose is to categorize, you're gonna see a lot of categorical variables. If your purpose is to quantify, you will see a lot of quantitative variables. We don't have evidence that the sample size is small or that there was something wrong with the online survey. Therefore, uh, there are no specific concerns. Once I answer the question, I move to a different question. And um, if I answer it, I have to move to a different question. So that when I review that I've completed five of the 14 questions, if I now have to go do something else, what I can do at this point is I can uh, leave this question I can close the tab and it asks me, do you wanna leave the site? And I say, yes. And uh, whenever I want to continue on with the quiz, I can go back to my items and notice that it says here that my quiz is incomplete. Well, that's because it's a work in progress. So I can go back into the quiz. I have infinite in and out privileges. I have an infinite amount of time. I'm not restricted to a few minutes. And uh, if you have any questions as you're making progress through your first few activities, labs, quizzes, uh, bring them over to our conferences that happen from Monday through Thursday, 1 to 4 p.m. Or call our, our business tutor, Chris Ibarra, come connect with Chris from 9 a.m. to noon, uh, Monday through Thursday. And I wanna thank you for uh, watching this 18 minute video. Take care.